Great. Chrissy, you ready to go? Okay, we got we got enough for a quorum, and we, we have we have enough for a committee of the whole. We're gonna, we'll take on the world at this point in time. Uh, call the meeting to order. Please take the roll. Calling the roll, Mr. Schron. Here. Mr. Harrison. Here. Mr. Greenspan. Mr. Greenspan is absent. Mr. Germana. Here. Ms. Simon. Here. We have a quorum, and I'd like the record to reflect that Ms. Conwell, Mr. Brady, and Mr. Miller are in attendance. Is it something about the subject matter that has all these record, <laughs> all, all these additional people wanting to hear? I said it. Well, thanks, thanks, thanks. I thought perhaps a. Everybody's enjoyed the products that we're going to be voting on here today. So, um, is there any public comment you say uh, in regards to the agenda that anybody signed in for? No, Mr. Chair. Okay. And does anybody have a chance to? Everybody have a chance to look at uh, the October third meeting minutes? Uh, hopefully, everybody has. Uh, the chair will move that we approve the minutes of the October third. Is there a second? It's been seconded. Any discussion in regards to it? Hearing no discussion, all in favor of approving the minutes from the October 3rd meeting, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Uh, there, we have before us two um, items on the uh, agenda that have been referred to the committee. Uh, would you please read into the record uh, 0217? Resolution 2016-0217, authorizing an economic development fund accelerated growth loan in the amount not to exceed $1,500,000 to Fatheads Brewing for the benefit of a project located at Angle Road in the city of May Middleburg Heights, permanent parcel number 171-21004. And by the fact that Mr. Lockett is standing at the podium, I assume you're prepared to speak on this issue. Good morning. Tom. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this morning you heard I have a, a request before you for Fatheads Brewery uh, for a million and a half for equipment. But before I get into the request, I just want to update the committee on um, Fatheads and what it's meant to us over the last five to six years. Back in 2011, uh, we, Calgary County worked very closely with the commercial uh, real estate developer to bring Fatheads to Calgary County. Uh, currently, they have a, had a restaurant here in North Olmsted, but they did not have any kind of brewery or manufacturing facility here in Cuyahoga County. That manufacturing facility literally could have went anywhere, but uh, it came to Cuyahoga County. And so at that time, when Cuyahoga County participated in that initial uh, development process, we provided a loan somewhere around four, $485,000 at 2% for equipment. And their commitment to us was that they would commit 18 new jobs and a payroll about a million two. I am so glad to say before you that they did exactly what they said they were going to do uh, back in 2011, and they did it three years ago. Uh, so What's the status of that loan? That loan is paid as agreed. The company uh, has done everything, all their commitments that they said they would do. So, uh, I'm, again, we're proud to even bring this again before you because of they have been outstanding in their commitments to the city of Middleborough Heights and to Cuyahoga County in their development. So that initial loan has been retired at this point in time? It has not been retired. There's still an outstanding balance on it. Uh, again, they've paid every dime as agreed. Okay, what's the length of time of that current? Uh, that loan was at 10 years. Okay, yeah. so we're still looking at another, mm -hmm. what, uh, six years on that loan? Okay, yeah. thanks. But again, going back to the, the request today, this project is for a total of about $11 million, 400000 for equipment. Um, our partners on this transaction is Fifth Third Bank. Um, in addition to that, they will be building a new facility through a developer and will go into a long-term lease with the developer in Middleburg Heights. Uh, so again, they're back here before us with a substantial ex expansion project. And I, I think it's an excellent opportunity for Cuyahoga County to assist them in their uh, expansion. What I want to do now is there's a number of guests that have came you, here. Before you leave the podium. We'll no, I'm not going to leave. Okay. Leave. All right. I want to introduce my guests because there's a number of guests here to support this uh, transaction. I have with me Chuck the Sheriff from Middleburg Heights. And Chuck may want to say a few words later on in the presentation. I have with me... Chris Clegg from Fifth Third Bank, who's a strong partner in the transaction, along with um, Kathleen McCasa. And then I have uh, Glenn 
Bedini and Matt Cole, who are the uh, definitely the stars of the show in this particular project for uh, Fathead Brewery. Um, going back into the structure of the deal, Cuyahoga County is, will participate at a at a a second position on the uh, equipment with Fifth Third. Um, the, the company is going to a facility, about 125,000 square foot facility, which is substantial bigger than what they have today. Um, this project, as far as the impact of community, uh, I ran some analysis on the tax benefit, and it's estimated that at the end of the day, the annual tax benefit of this particular project will be $451,000. And that tax benefit is going to state, the county, the city, and the school district, and library and municipal parks and so forth. So it impacts our community in a great deal. Uh, on the job creation aspect, Fatheads not only created the 18 that they committed to us over five years ago, but they went, their total employment staff right now today, as they are, is 37. They will commit to creating roughly a total of 74 new jobs total uh, as a result of this project with a payroll estimate at roughly three million two. So again, they went from 1.2, this is expected to go to a 3.2 uh, in payroll for the Cuyahoga County Department of Development in Northeast Ohio. Uh, the company's strong. Uh, they've done phenomenal in business and expansion. Um, again, our structure is in a second position on equipment with the bank, um, and they are committed to uh, the city of Middleborough Heights for at least 10, 15 years on a lease with the developer in a real, on the real estate. Uh, at this time, I think it's important to let Matt and Glenn talk a little bit how this impacts their business and what this means to them. Before we get to them though, as far as the structure of the deal, is there any questions specifically for Mr. Lockett uh, while he's uh, at the microphone? Yes, Ms. Simon. So I want to understand the collateral. You you said we have a second to the bank on a UCC security. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow UCC once uh, once all the deal has closed. But we're only second. Is there yes. enough equity there to cover both loans? I mean, if we're only second, how are we guaranteed that we'll get paid if there's a default? Well, what happens in addition to that, we will have a personal guarantee with Matt and, and Glenn. Okay. Uh, the, the brew equipment is substantial in our market. It, it holds its value uh, a great deal because of the, the explosion in the market. And I believe that uh, over the next few years, that particular equipment will be solid. But at the end of the day, we, we really want the, the company to do and pay as agreed, and should that happen, we have a strong guarantor. Okay, well, that was the, and, and the Western Reserve Fund, it, are we bonding? How, what money, what's the source of the money in the Western Reserve Fund at this point? Is that casino money now? I'm not sure what we're calling Western casino. Reserve. Yeah, I'm not either, but I'm just going by this the job creation <laughs> fund. <laughs> Okay, well, that's Certainly fair. Certainly something to be said for our integrity, at least. Right. Okay, we'll have to follow up with that. All right. Thanks. Yes, uh, Ms. Campbell? I think the chair to Mr. Lockett, um, just to clarify, there's already 37 projection, production jobs, so this is going to be an additional, additional. 74. So you know, here, let me explain, because I, I think I didn't miss smoke. We, we have 37 existing new jobs right now, existing jobs. They're going to create 25 Unrelated, when I say unrelated to the brewery, these are basically maybe some restaurant retail, but the actual manufacturing brewery, I think there's 40, I'm sorry, I got it backwards, 25 manufacturing brew jobs and 49 roughly on the retail side. So a total of 74 altogether, okay. including and the existing jobs. And this is kind of related, but the percentage of interest uh, charge for this loan is three percent can you tell me why some we we had one this morning was only a two percent payback is there a certain dollar amount that we charge a certain percentage rate to get back i'm not getting it well this loan went through our ccic on november 9th and at that time 
Uh, it was recommended that the rate be at 3%. So it just depends on the negotiations. Negotiation basically. and impact to the community. I think the the other deal that we spoke about this morning had a strong uh, sense on the community economic development side, as opposed to not that this didn't, but this was more of a place based one before, where it was directly related to uh, the redevelopment of a theater and that impacted the community in an uh, area that needed much development. And my last question, in regards to the jobs, was there anything negotiated in, in regards to, um, I don't like to say set asides, but in, you know, for disabled people to work or reentry population, uh, any percentages that were going to, that can work at those jobs, was any of that negotiated uh, in, the, in the deal? No set asides negotiated, but I can assure you that. Matt Cole and, and Glenn have, will work with anybody that's ready, really able to come to work and perform that task. Uh, the jobs are uh, line bottling jobs, and I'm sure Matt will be able to talk about those kind of jobs that are available to anyone that's that's you know wants to come in and do the work that's needed to be done. So I, I don't think there's been an issue whether hiring certain anybody, but they'll be more than happy to speak to them. I'm sure. I'd like to get you connected with developmental disabilities. Uh, you know. Okay, thank you. Uh, President Brady. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the uh, councilman uh, noted that the uh, um, that this was a, a three percent interest, but the but the uh, this is for a shorter amount of time though. Ten, for, ten years. Ten years. So yes. it's tw it's half as half as long as as yeah. the previous one as well. So it's a shorter amount of time and higher percentage. That's all. Oh, uh, thank you. Bring it, point out. Any, any other questions? Uh, the one comment that uh, the chair would make is that uh, I also sit on the uh, investment advisory committee for the council for the the county, and uh, we're struggling to get above half a percent uh, for most of our investments of our funds. Uh, so at three percent, uh, that is a substantial increase in, in what we're getting. So we we as taxpayers appreciate that, uh, and uh, I think it's a win win for everybody because I assume it's a rate that's. Um, pretty attractive rate from that standpoint, from from uh, your, your standpoint too. Uh, Middleburg Heights, what are they can, what are they doing contributing? I'm not asking for them to take the. What are you? What what are they stepping up to the plate for, based on your knowledge? Well, they looked in at some possible uh, uh, job creation credits and possible some uh, community impact to uh, the facility. Uh, and again, uh, I'm sure Chuck can really drill down to it. They have not nailed down exactly what they're going to do. But they did assure me that they will be doing something in this particular project. Okay. Well, I think it's important when we have uh, the public sector uh, doing something at the county level, the private sector through the banking, and uh, the local community should, I think, should all be be part of a, a stimulation package. You shouldn't shouldn't fall on the shoulders of just one part of the mm -hmm. of uh, the public sector out there. So I would highly encourage Middleburg Heights to you know, to to do something. Uh, I'm not negotiating on behalf of you, you folks from Fathead, but I just think that it's always appropriate when you come into this this body to tell us that everybody has at least mm -hmm. got something at the at the table. And certainly, personal guarantees tells me that the uh, that the owners are, are are stepping up to the plate on this too. But I, I thought someplace in the, in the documents, uh, back to Ms. Simon's question, that uh, uh, that our security actually runs all the way through, not just the new equipment, runs all the way through to all the existing equipment that, that, that that's in Fathead. So even equipment that was in previous uh, was previously purchased is part of the security. I think is that that is. Uh, I don't want to overstate this from no, the body, but you are exactly right. Okay, uh, I just um, so from the, from that standpoint, uh, I, I I feel with with all that out there that we were we're in pretty good shape from that standpoint. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Lockett? Now, how would you like to proceed? Now that well, I'd, like to, you, I'd like to bring up Glenn and Matt so they can tell you a little bit about uh, how this impacts them and what this means to their new expansion project. Sounds great. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so we um, uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk with us today and uh, and. Uh, potentially approve our project. Um, it's fascinating what's happened in our industry in the last 10 years. Um, I, I was involved with Great Lakes Brewing Company in the early 90s, uh, kind of watched the company grow from a small operation to a, a thriving um, top 20 brewery in the country. Uh, so along this ride, you know, we started with three employees. 
um, on a shoestring budget. And uh, in the last five years, um, like you said, we've grown to very close to 40 employees. Um, we've fought with supply and demand issues from day one. Um, we have out of stock issues at, at our current facility. We have growth issues where we are not able to expand our current facility. Um, so we've really been forced with either we kind of stay where we're at or do we continue to build a bigger machine in a thriving industry right now? So um, we, we've built a reputation as one of uh, the premier breweries in the country. Um, we were mo re mo most recently awarded um, uh, more medals than any other brewery in the United States at the Great American Beer Festival. Um, so I feel like we've, we've got a great, great work culture. We've got um, very uh, solid branding and um, a, a product that is in very high demand. And, and I feel that, um, that we can... We can create more jobs, um, uh, bring tax dollars, and really create a bigger machine here in the next 10 to 20 years. And um, we, we could re definitely uh, help with your support. Um, and it, it's an exciting business. And, um, and, and I think that um, if you ask uh, craft beer enthusiasts um, who are some of the top players in the industry uh, in Ohio, I think you'll see our name up towards the top. Cool. Glenn? Thank you. Uh, uh yeah, just like Matt said, uh, thank you so much for having us here and considering um, lending us this money to increase our business and, and uh, entrench ourselves in the community. Um, I'm actually from Pittsburgh. That it started. In <laughs> Is that a bad thing? I probably should have said No, it, it, it was obviously not a thing at all. Bad uh, or good. You know, well, Sunday. I just want to say that, that the reason, uh, you know, um, my wife and I started Fatheads 25 years ago, and it was just a craft beer bar. Uh, you know, and with some good branding and good food and things like that. And then we, you know, we, we met with Matt and talked with Matt about um, getting involved with him and creating a Fatheads in North Olmstead, Ohio, uh, which is a brew pub. Um, and that place thrived and, and took off from day one uh, as far as the food and the beer. And, and like Matt said, over the last nine years since that's been, or eight years since that's been um, there, we have won several um, national and worldwide uh, awards for our beer. And, um, you know, so five years ago, we decided to, that it would be good to get, you know, the beer in the hands of more people. So that's when we wanted to do the, the uh, brewery. Um, and in that time, we talked with, you know, Arnold and Charles, and we really liked with what uh, Middleburg Heights had to offer us uh, as far as just the location and, and the community itself. So that's why we, we chose that area. Um, and I remember, and I said this at the last meeting, I remember when, when we first talked to Arnold, and he said we would have to create 18 jobs uh, in three years. And... Um, you know, I looked at Matt and said, I don't know if we could do that. I'm hoping we could do that, you know. Uh, and we, we certainly exceeded that. And at this point in time, I'm a lot more confident in it that I think that some of the numbers that Arnold has given you and the numbers that we put down to give to Arnold are very conservative. I think that we will have more than 25 uh, manufacturing jobs. And out of those 49 or 50 retail jobs, you're going to have um, a lot of um, management, too, that will be high income and higher taxes and things like that. So... Uh, we're very confident in what we, we have to offer you guys, and I hope that you're confident in us as well because uh, from our track record, you know, I think we've proven a little bit anyway. So, And, and we're investing in technology. We're investing in people. So these jobs are not – these are maintenance jobs. These are lab jobs. These are a very wide range of jobs, um, general housekeeping jobs. So, uh, you know, we're, we're – it's not – these aren't all high-tech jobs. These are um, – some entry level jobs, packaging jobs. So there's a whole gamut of, of people that we're going to be hiring, sales sales people, and things like that. So um, really, we're investing back in the community, and we're investing, um, and we're entrenching ourselves, um, you know, in in a culture that um, that that we our our employees love love fatheads, and I, I feel like they're going to be with us for the long haul. Good questions from anybody on the committee. Not, not hearing any for uh, Glenn and Matt. Did you, did you guys brew before, or is it sounds like it was a private label product, and then you uh, you've now converted to, to brewery, or is it, were you always a small micro brewery? Is that what it was? I was I'm not sure. We didn't start brewing beer um, until we came to Ohio. Uh, in Pittsburgh, it was just a craft beer bar, a okay. lot of beers on tap, and good bar food. Um, and when we hooked up with Matt, Matt's been brewing for 25 years as well in different places, like you said, Great Lakes and other other places like Rocky River Brewing. When we hooked up with Matt and opened the brew pub in North Olmsted, that's when we started brewing beer okay. under our own label uh, of, of us doing it. So. so we started with the 10 barrel system, then we moved to a 25 barrel system, and now we're moving to a 70 barrel system. And, and is, now is Fatheads uh, headquartered where? 
Um, well, the brewery's headquartered in Middleburg Heights. Uh, the original fat is is Pittsburgh, but now we kind of have a, a, a joint thing in both cities, I guess. But for the most part, uh, they're, they're different corporations. So especially because of liquor licenses and brewery licenses and things like that. Uh, and, and a couple of it's almost different ownerships a little bit in some of them uh, with common ownerships in each. Uh, so I'd say for the for the brewery aspect, we're headquartered in Middleburg Heights and we'd like to stay there. Yeah, we're, we're very strong in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana. Um, we're looking to open up some new markets. So, um, you know, like our, our number one um, account is Giant Eagle. We are in Heinen's, Whole Foods, Kroger's, a lot of chain stores. Um, our best draft account is Progressive Field. Um, we have a kiosk there. Um, so, um, you know, we're we're building those relationships, widening our, our footprint of our, our wholesalers and ultimately getting our beer to more people. But it was back to Ms. Simon's question as far as uh, where, where are we in the pecking order as far as security and stuff like, is there a Pennsylvania corporation and an Ohio corporation? There is. Um, but and what are we, who are we loaning money to? You're loaning to the Ohio Fatheads Brewing LP, which is the partnership that's uh, located in Middleburg Heights. Is there cross collateralization between these two corporations? No. They're separate, uh, clean cut between the two. Separate and clean cut. One could go down, and, and the other one would still down. survive. Absolutely. Okay, so the Pittsburgh one can go down. Sorry. Well, <laughs> no, just, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Are we? We're in favor of all jobs here. At least so my kids right. get out of college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, other questions? Yes, Mr. Gamera. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, you know, I was going to speak up, but I guess this—I didn't know if this was the the best place for it, but uh, I guess I'm going to. <laughs> Uh, I can I can tell you that Middleburg Heights is one of the best, well-run cities in in, in the county. Uh, it's got an outstanding mayor. Everything is stable. Council and the city out there work together like hand and glove, right. and they actually have uh, people on their staff that came from Cuyahoga County. So, uh, on a, on a personal note, I can tell you that. What they're doing works. I <clears throat> happen to be personal friends with the uh, the people that grew um, kind of the same situation uh, from a, a brew pub restaurant situation. That's Thirsty Dog Brewery. Um, they kind of the same story. They they've grown tremendously. Uh, took a location in Akron, and of course they are winning uh, many awards. And it's it's a growth industry. So uh, congratulations to Thank you, you to picking Middleburg Heights because it, it's a great place, close to uh, the highway and so on. So uh, and, you know my input is that I, I think this is a pretty pretty safe loan because it's definitely uh, a growing industry. You, you represent Middlebrook Heights, don't you? Yes. <laughs> okay. I have to right. represent Heights. <laughs> I, I thought there might be some causal connection. <laughs> but I, I think everybody is familiar with Gary Starr uh, and uh, the longevity and the strength he has and a great working working team. And, and Charles has been wonderful to work with as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. That was one of the driving factors of keeping it. We looked at some other cities. And it was kind of a, you know, we love the location with the highway visibility. I think, you know, there's a couple hundred thousand cars that zip up and down 71, and you're going to see fatheads right there um, on the highway. And, um, you know, I, yes, the city has been absolutely a joy to work with. And if they give us some tax payment, we'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thanks very much for your comments. Uh, congratulations on your success. You. Um, you also have Mr. Clegg here, I assume, that... Uh, uh, from Fifth Third and okay, and Charles. Either either way, as to who else is going to be speaking on behalf of this project? Uh, yeah, so I'm Chris Clegg with Fifth Third and Kathleen McKessa with Fifth Third. Um, we uh, we're um, in the process of going through our own approvals right now. We've got uh, the, this county loan is an important piece to our capital stack, so uh, we're we're excited about the opportunity to work with you guys again on this project. And um, we've actually, um, for their existing bottling uh, a, a line that they've got in their brewery now, we financed that um, uh, actually probably in the last couple of years. So uh, we've already been working with, with these guys on, on their existing operation, and we're looking to expand it with the help of Cuyahoga County. And 
really excited to be here. And give us a quick uh, seeing how you you've probably already dug dug into this, Mr. Clegg. Uh, the back to uh, Ms. Simon's comments or questions about uh, the the level of security. Uh, what's uh, give us the equipment uh, yeah, yeah, overview? So, so we have Either that or. You know, yeah, we, we, have a, we have a, she can correct me if I miss, miss And she probably will. She I've, probably I've known her for 35, 40 years, yeah, so I see, she so, will. So there, so there's, in the entire project, there's, there's really 9.2 million of equipment and the bank is financing, financing the full, that, that full amount. The second piece of it, the two and a half million is, is going to be an SBA piece, um, but as far as your one and a half million, the Cuyahoga County one and a half million, you have you have you'll have the full nine point two million of equipment as collateral second behind the bank, and then plus their existing equipment that's already there. So we also believe that, and and then the guarantees on top of that. So we think that for the amount of the loan and for you know the collateral that will be there, there's plenty of uh, of, of collateral, especially as the the debt gets paid down, the equity will build, and the county and the county will be in a better better position. Questions from Mr. Clyde? Fifth third, yes. Are there any additional, um, well, the thought went out of my head, but it'll come back. <laughs> yes, Ms. Simon? So did I just hear you say as time goes by, there's going to be an increase in the equity in the collateral? Is that? I'm just saying as the debt pays down. The, oh, the just there's more, will, there's more equity from the debt and, repayment. Right, okay, right. fine. And, and fine. Your, it doesn't appreciate this equipment. I'm assuming it depreciates, <laughs> well, right? not by much, though. Oh, not by yeah, much. Yeah, so, like, like Arnold referred to, that, that in this industry, um, it holds a huh. Pretty good value. Mm -hmm. Equipment we bought three years ago, used equipment for uh, the brew house itself was three hundred some thousand. It's probably probably could sell for that. After Interesting. Five, five years, we'll gotcha. Make it, so. I understand. Yeah. Thanks. I assume there's a waiting list to get equipment, probably on a natural right. basis, and that's what keeps the value that's up exactly because right. uh, of the fact that if you can't get the equipment, you're going to pay whatever. If you want to start a brew pub, you're going to you're going to pay to get it there. Yep. Right. Supply and demand. Yes, Mr. Miller. Mm -hmm. My question is as to the uh, repayment schedule. Is, is it a straight 10-year amortization or, or is it uh, structured differently? The county's known as straight 10-year amortization. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions? Hearing none, oh yes, uh, Ms. Simon. Just a question, why is this equipment so hard to get? Is it not manufactured fast enough? Is it so precise in specialties? Or what, what's the deal with the equipment? Mac definitely has I, I think it's basically the indie industry is growing in double digits, a double digit growth. So uh, there's a brewery opening up in the United States just about every other day. Are there local manufacturers of this equipment? Uh, not locals. There's equipment manufacturers scattered throughout the United States. Um, the, the equipment that we're purchasing is actually um, will be produced in Germany. It's extremely energy efficient um, and um, pretty state of the art. It's also very expensive. <laughs> I hear you. Okay, thank you. And I, I, I assume that you have done all your worry lists as far as whether we're getting anywhere close to saturation point with all the microbreweries and things like that. I think that's a legitimate uh, concern. Um, I think that we really got into this industry at a good time five years ago. I think we entrenched ourselves in the, in, in, in the community. I think we've got wonderful, I should have brought some packaging. I mean, hopefully you guys have seen our branding. Our branding is extremely strong. Um, and, and we've got great, great relationships with our wholesalers. And um, so I think we're, we're ahead of the curve there. I think we're what you would call a regional player. I think if we were um, to, at the same position that we were five years ago, it might be a little tougher. But I, but I do believe that um, that, that we're we, we've we've definitely got a foothold in the market, and um, it's really hard to get placement in Giant Eagles and things like that. So our problem is 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 running out of stock right now. So we've got to continue to to keep the pipeline filled. Um, that's my biggest concern. Okay. They're famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got we're we're, we're fortunate to have a number of regional um, breweries here between Great Lakes yeah. and yeah. And I mean, Ohio uh, right now is one of the fastest growing states when it comes to craft beer, and um, we're seventy five percent of our beers sold in Northeast Ohio. So you know we're pushing a little harder to to, to in Columbus and Cincinnati. So we can go deeper in Ohio and grow and not have to. We're not putting together a plan where we have to forecast our beer in fifty two states. We're, we're going to do it regionally and strong and circumpass Ohio and, and continue to grow organically. Yeah, and unless I miss something, we, we only got 50 of them. So. <laughs> I think it's the Germans. He, he, a, we have, we're, we have more yeah. than our fair share of Germans in Ohio. They make I the best beer in the world. Do it yeah. 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 
in Middleburg Heights. Uh, you, you've now obviously been put on the spot because uh, <laughs> everybody's waiting to on bated breath to hear what, what, where you guys are going to be coming in and, on this and project. I'm, and I'm ready to deliver, Chairman. Council oh, President, wow. We're making uh, news here? Council it's, members, okay. yes, absolutely. Oh. Uh, I can tell you that uh, my passion for Middleburg Heights is because these gentlemen have a passion for what they do. And I encourage all of you to come out and see in Middleburg Heights what exactly it is they do, because it's quite a formidable operation that actually happened with the help of county count with uh, the Cuyahoga County and with the help of Arnold Lockett back in 2011 when Fatheads wanted to establish their production brewery. And uh, we stepped up. We recognized what a great uh, partner they would be, and they have been that great partner. So, of course, recognizing that they've both grown in capacity and reputation in the time that they've been in Cuyahoga County and Middleburg Heights, we recognize the importance of this project. So the city is absolutely going to step to the plate uh, with some form of tax abatement, and we're in talks with them to see what works best for the company. Uh, we're also going to be doing uh, no-charge building permits on the facility, which is a over 100,000 square foot facility that they're going to be occupying and we're gonna be doing infrastructure improvements to help accommodate their operations at that building. So certainly we're gonna do whatever it is it takes and we've demonstrated in the past that we have uh, done things to help them grow as well. For example, when the state changed the law to allow uh, brewers and distilleries to operate a tasting room under their production license, Middleburg Heights changed, uh, we approached Fatheads and we indeed changed the, our code to allow them to operate a tasting room in Middleburg Heights, which has gave birth to the Tap House, which now will grow into a 250-seat restaurant right at the brewery. So what you're going to see is the state of Ohio recognized that the craft beer industry uh, can help foster tourism in Ohio, just as the wineries have in the past fostered tourism. So what we're looking for is for the Fatheads Brewery in Middleburg Heights to be a destination for people from all around Ohio, all around the country, and even all around the world to see this equipment that's coming from Germany in operation. So they're going to bring them right to Middleburg Heights in Cuyahoga County. So this is why we recognize this to be a very important project for our community, Cuyahoga County, and the region. And we certainly will be uh, working with them to give them the proper incentives to make this project, make sure this project moves forward. And we certainly thank you for your consideration as well with what you're looking to provide. Thank you. Questions thank you. for Middlebrook Heights? You ought to know the ins and outs of this. You know, you hit them with some tough ones, Chuck. Well, just, just one other comment. I guess this is a, also a question. Um, you know, my son has lived in Milwaukee for, for 10 years, uh, going to Marquette and and so on. And when we visited, uh, there are a number of breweries that give tours, and and then people actually use the opportunity to eat. And it, they're sold out. I mean, <laughs> it's free. These tours are free, but you got to get reservations. It's it's that much in demand. So it's a very popular thing. Best, best Thank of you. luck. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, any other questions, Ms. Simon? Just a question about the. Former location, North Olmstead, Does what's going to happen there? Well, we're in negotiations with a couple other breweries that are um, in, in the process of expanding. So the ultimate goal would be to bring another business to Middleburg Heights if everything goes right. Um, they would We would be taking some equipment with us, some larger tanks. So um, basically, it would be like somebody occupying our building about three years ago um, as far as the brewing capacity goes. So... That's our goal. Hopefully, that uh, we can create more jobs, keep the equipment there, um, and and really make it a, a destination. So, and that obviously alleviates um, us having to 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 put the building back the way that it was. We have a lot of infrastructure, of, you know, drains and plumbing and piping, and yeah, it could be a mess to put did it back you, together. Did you own that building then? Do you own we the building? We did not. No. So we, you're. We're on a month-to-month -month lease month -month. at right now, and uh, the owner of the building is a home brewer, so I'm in pretty good shape. <laughs> okay. Ms. Cowell, yes. Question came back to me. Thank you, Chair. To Matt, uh, are there any other loans you have from the county, or will this be the only one? This is the only one, correct? No. Nope. They had a loan in 2011. With the, 2000. That was the initial one that brought them here to Cuyahoga County for the equipment. So that's the only one. This will be the second one. And, again, that first one is being paid as a brewery. That's that six years still outstanding on that loan. Okay. 
Thank you. Other questions? Comments? Okay. Uh, I see before us, Mr. Lockett, a, uh, a substitute, proposed substitute resolution. Um, this, uh, are, you, are you involved with that, or were, were, uh, was that something being driven by the administration? I think is that, is that on that? Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not uh, familiar with the, uh, with the substitute. Oh, uh, no, I'm not. I didn't. There's a substitute for fat heads? No. <laughs> There's a sunset provision. Right. Sunset provision is, is, is in there. Uh, is that the only? That's the only. So that's the only issue in the substitute. Yes. Okay. All right. So the. Sorry about the. I don't need that. Twelve months. To spend the money. We'll uh, is there somebody here from Economic Development that can speak to that? Sorry. <laughs> Sarah Parks Jackson again from Department of Development. The substitute amendment includes a clause, a, which has a sunset provision, that indicates that if the company has not closed within 12 months from the date of approval, then the item sunsets, um, and they would have to come back to this body okay. again. And, all right, so that opens up the Pandora's box a little bit on that. Can I, uh, is the equipment going to be able to be delivered in time? Is everybody? That's just the closing. Yeah. Um, so after the loan closes, then I don't, you would probably do the expenditures after the loan close. So we're just trying to make sure that this item is secure, your approval is secure, and only for one year so that it doesn't go on in perpetuity. Right. I just we wanted to make sure all the other parties are moving at the same timeline well, to make sure that our... Chairman our, Mike May from Department of Development, uh, Economic Development Division, again, I think it may... It'd be important for everybody to understand what the term closing means. That means that we basically have consummated a loan contract with the party. So that gives us 12 months to actually consummate that contract. It then You then have the time, uh, and we can build it into the contract, the amount of time it will uh, be necessary uh, to actually draw down the funds uh, for the for the various activities. No, no I understood that part. It, it, it is that... that I assume we're not going to close until uh, Mr. Clegg is already prepared to close, and he's not going to close until he's compared that he is convinced that the equipment is going to hit within its timeline. So then we're not going to close until all three of those steps are in in in, in the sequence. And I can assume that all of you up there are happy that, that that we're going to walk away from this if this is not done within 12 months. Not happy that it would happen because it's not going to happen. But I mean, in the event that it should happen, we don't get. You folks to close, the equipment's not there, that we still have the, the ability to walk out of this. Correct. So just so everybody understands, the, the, the project is actually two phases. So the $6.7 million um, equipment that we talked about earlier, um, the bank is going to set that up as soon as we get the proclamation from this body um, stating that the $1.5 million is approved. And we're hoping for that. I'm not sure your timeline, but we're hoping to have that by next Tuesday. In which case, we will then um, put in front of our credit committee um, the approval for the 6.7. We will go ahead and then fund that once we get approval. And we're expecting to fund that portion here in December, before December 15th. And then once they will be ordering that equipment from Germany, the actual second phase, which is the $2.5 million um, and the 1.5 million that you're coming to the table with, we will be approving that at the bank as soon as we get the timeline and the construction budget. Um, so I'm expecting that all to happen in like January, February of 2017. As soon as the building is built, we'll be doing ordering the equipment for the building, which will probably be in the summer. And we expect to have the full brewery up and running by November, December next year. So the funds here will be drawn this summer at some point, and then we've got an interest-only period. Then we're going to be starting uh, principal payments, which will be in 2017, yeah, 2018. This, this clause doesn't refer to the, the funds being drawn down. This only refers to the contracting. Okay. Uh, and so we didn't need to... Oh, uh, sorry. No, no, it's okay. I, okay. It's, it's all right. Oh, we appreciate the okay. timeline because we want to get the first first draw off, the, the first keg. Uh, okay. But, um, the, the equipment is a 10-month lead time. Yeah. Well, that's, again, that's, so that's, that's not relevant to whether or not this... Okay. This clause gets signed and all that okay. put in place. Uh, but I did hear 
you were the only person I think I heard that said Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday is a relevant date because that's the next time this body does not vote to pass this. This body votes to, to vote it to the next, to the full council. The council is what votes that. So I can only assume that, uh, that I heard Tuesday that somebody would like to have this done other, or a suspension of the rules. Is that a good guess? Yes. Okay, good. Wow, what harmony. Um, okay, all right. It so, would help speed the timeline up. This is yeah, okay, well, uh, first thing we're going to do is, is any questions in regards to the substitute? Uh, hearing no questions, the chair will move that we substitute uh, the proposed substitute uh, in lieu of the language of the, in the original. Uh, second. There, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion regarding the substitute? Hearing none, all in favor of uh, the substitute uh, being approved, say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Hearing none. Okay, the substitute is now what's before us. Um, the chair uh, hearing what I think uh, is that uh, that they would prefer this to go to a second reading suspension. Uh, yes. The chair will move that uh, uh, the re resolution 0217 uh, be submitted to council for uh, a, uh, a second reading suspension. Uh, is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion regarding that? Okay, hearing none. All in favor of the proposed substitute uh, going forward for a second reading suspension, say aye. Aye. Uh, any nays? No, there is no nays. So now it moves to the next body. And so next Tuesday, you can all wait with bated breath when it's uh, before the president uh, of council. Thanks. Thank you Thank so much. It. Thank you much. Thank you much. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Can I please have my name added? Thanks. Yes. Uh, can you add uh, Mr. Jumana's name to the original bill? Thanks. Uh, is there another? Is there any other matters to come before us? <laughs> Resolution 2016-0219, authorizing the issuance of a not to exceed $11 million County of Cuyahoga, Ohio Economic Development Refunding Revenue Bonds Series 2016 for the purpose of refunding the remaining outstanding principal amount of $13,350,000 County of Cuyahoga, Ohio Economic Development Revenue Refunding Bonds Series 2010 Hathaway Brown School, which were issued to provide funds to assist Hathaway Brown School in the refinancing of cost of a project within the meaning of Chapter 165, Ohio Revised Code. Is there somebody here to speak on behalf of this? Good morning. Sarah Parks Jackson with the Department of Development. The department is requesting um, a resolution to authorize the issuance of not to exceed $11 million in Cuyahoga County Economic Development Refunding Bonds. We initially issued these bonds at $20 million in 1999. The refunding was done in 2010 for $13 million, three, and therefore the request today for um, $11 million. The refundings come to lower the interest rate on behalf of, on behalf of the bonds, which um, allows the project to have more funding. I have with me today Bob Labus from Squire Patton Box and Valerie Hughes from Hathaway Brown. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Mr. Uh, council President, committee members, and, and other council members who are here. And I'm assuming that you came, uh, the, the non-committee members of council who came to the meeting, I'm assuming that you came for this matter. <laughs> uh, not quite as exciting as, uh, as fatheads. And, and as an aside, I've been a home brewer myself for about four or five years. So perhaps in another four or five years, I'll be here asking for a loan to help launch uh, my, my brewery. Which Sounds like there's a building available with uh, resources if, yeah. you want to, if you want to jump on that quick. Think about calling it fat belly instead of fat heads. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, as uh, Sarah mentioned, uh, the county originally issued tax exempt bonds for Hathaway Brown School back in 1999. And uh, let me give you all just a, a bit of a brief reminder that uh, the benefit to the school, which is a 501c3 nonprofit, is that they pay a lower rate of interest than they would pay to the bondholders if the interest to the bondholders was included in gross income for federal tax purposes. A number of years ago in 1986, most recently when the Internal Revenue Code was last rewritten by Congress, because the Internal Revenue Code is federal statute, federal law, so therefore that's Congress. Uh, Congress determined that certain types of activities undertaken by private sector entities were sufficiently 
um, served a sufficiently strong public purpose that the interest on the debt should be tax exempt, which provides a benefit to the bondholders because they don't have to pay income tax on that interest. So they're willing to accept a lower interest rate. So the benefit ultimately goes to the borrowers. Congress determined as part of the Internal Revenue Code in order for interest on these types of bonds, these tax-exempt bonds, to be tax-exempt, a public body, a political subdivision, an arm of government needed to issue the bonds. And back in the 1990s uh, and early part, and, and before 1980s, 1990s, early part of, of the 2000s, Cuyahoga County was an active issuer of these types of tax exempt bonds. We refer to them as conduit bonds. And the reason why we call them conduit bonds is because the county is merely serving as a conduit, as a pass through to enable the interest to be tax exempt. These bonds do not impact the county's financial statement. The county has no liability to repay the debt service on the bonds. These bonds do not count toward any debt limits that the county might have to be able to issue its own debt for its own projects. These bonds do not impact the county's ratings. The county really is merely serving as a pass through. There are a few reasons why uh, these types of bonds have not been issued as frequently by the county over the past several years, so you may not be as familiar with seeing them today as you were in years past. The most significant reason being that with interest rates at historic lows, uh, the differential between tax exempt interest rates and taxable interest rates is much less than it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. And so there are costs associated with a tax exempt borrowing and, uh, you know, including things like paying folks like me to render a tax opinion. So a lot of borrowings that in years past might have been done on a tax-exempt basis and now being done on a conventional basis. As interest rates start to rise, I think we'll see a greater spread in interest rates. And so uh, it's at least my hope that perhaps the county has the opportunity to again become more active in issuing these types of tax-exempt bonds. But for this specific project, Again, what we're asking the county to do is authorize the issuance of um, refunding bonds that, as Sarah mentioned, will lower the interest rate uh, on the, the bonds for the school. So they will be paying a lower cost of interest. The bonds are being directly sold to or directly purchased by Key Government Finance, which is a subsidiary of Key Bank, so local participant purchasing the bonds. Key Bank is a very active participant in this, uh, this tax-exempt bond industry, so they well understand that they're not looking to the county for uh, anything other than serving as the conduit issuer. Uh, and the last thing that I'll add before answering any questions, or if you have any questions of Valerie, that I'll say is uh, while uh, the school doesn't produce anything like beer, they do obviously produce a lot of outstanding graduates, some of whom go on to uh, all sorts of uh, worthwhile careers, including, for example, becoming an assistant law director of Cuyahoga County. So you have an alum in your midst. <laughs> uh, questions for the committee at this point in time? Yes, Ms. Um You stated that there was the government um, body that had to set precedent or rule over this. So why didn't you go to the municip municipality versus us? Um, a lot of reasons, uh, a lot of answers to that question. The, the most, uh, the, at the threshold level, under the Ohio Revised Code, uh, the authority for issuing these types of bonds is found in Chapter 165 of the Ohio Revised Code. And a political subdivision can only issue refunding bonds or refinancing bonds for bonds that that political subdivision issued. So we are here before the county today, among other reasons, because the original bonds in 1999 were issued by Cuyahoga County rather than the city of Shaker Heights. Uh, among the reasons why uh, Cuyahoga County issued the bonds in 1999 was because, again, at that point in time, the county was a very active issuer of these types of bonds, and the then three-member board of county commissioners were familiar with the process and also 
because boards of county commissioners met uh, by statute. As you may know, county commissioners are required to meet 50 times a year. I know that I imagine you as council members are thankful that that wasn't put into the charter. Uh, so county, the county commissioners <laughs> were, were we meeting uh, 50 <laughs> times a year. Uh, so they, uh, uh, it, it was a, um, the most efficient way. So the, the, the most frequent issuer was uh, at that point in time, uh, the county as opposed to the municipalities in the county. Um, so, so that's a primary reason why we went that route in 1999. Other questions? Anybody else? Well, it seems a shame not to have some of you in the stature from Hathaway Brown not to at least come and, and give us uh, her thoughts as to, as to what's going on with the, in regards to this and how it benefits Hathaway Brown. Well, thank you very much. Um, we do appreciate your hearing this. Um, yes, obviously, just like with your house and mortgage, we are always looking to see how we might be able to save some money ourselves. So this particular bond issue is going to take um, our interest rate down from about 3.4 to about 2.28. So over the long run, it's going to save us over a million and a half over the 14 years of the bond issue. Yeah. So, And there's no impact on the county whatsoever from, from this? Uh, other than, is there any costs that we're absorbing at all? Uh, no cost that the county is absorbing uh, for this type of refunding bond issue. The school did pay a modest uh, fee to to the county to serve as issuer. If this was a new issue, uh, the fee would be more substantial. Um, there's one additional point that that I would like to make, uh, which is that. At present, the schedule calls for closing this refunding bond issue on December the 1st. There are a variety of reasons why closing this type of transaction on the first of the month makes economic sense and provides savings. We understand the county council process, so we are requesting uh, that county council consider this uh, under a suspension of the rules at the November 29th council, full council meeting. And uh, if county council does pass on second read with suspension on the 29th, that will provide us time to close by December the 1st. Uh, we have a contingency plan in place should uh, county council decide that, that this warrants a third reading at the December 12th meeting. We would just close later in the month, but for uh, financial reasons and, and other practical reasons, uh, the school would respectfully request uh, that the county council consider a suspension and uh, passage on second read. Uh, rate, rates are locked in, though, yes. irrespective of what, what date you close on? The rate has been locked, yes. It, it, okay. uh, it's more to do with, with timing and the notice that was given to the existing bondholder, which is J.P. Morgan Chase, and uh, the t timing of the payoff. So, again, it, wouldn't, I, it, it, it would be helpful and preferable. Uh, we certainly would never have put ourselves in a position where we came to you and said, you must pass on suspension. So it's it's a request uh, for the benefit of the school that we would greatly appreciate if it's granted. Well, and I do understand that if, we, if it's the second week, uh, the the first meeting in December that pushes it back later, and, and I know things start to get crunchy and uh, with closings and stuff like that, and a lot of venues for for uh, the legal firms as we get to the close of the end of the year. So I uh, I don't see. Any Prohibition for it from our standpoint. Yeah, I was. I was just going to say we do have until December twelfth. Interestingly enough, to keep that rate locked in oh, after oh, that. Okay, so. so there is a the rate lock is only good till the twelfth. Okay. Well, I I, I, uh, I see no reason why we could not uh, go forward. So um, the chair will move uh, that we uh, pass the resolution with the uh, second reading suspension. Uh, is there a second on it? It's moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion regarding that? Hearing no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, hearing none, uh, it Thank will you. at least be submitted to, again, to next council meeting for second reading suspension. And what's your name, sir? Bob Labus. I just wanted to tell you I did actually come here to this committee for uh, <laughs> Hathaway Brown. Yeah. I didn't even know about the Fat Brewery. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We do appreciate it. And then and one last thing that I, I uh, would like to do is I do want to apologize to Christina because I know that the title of our resolutions tend to be very long and it is a bit of a burden trying to read that whole thing into the record and uh, I've uh, we it's been that way uh, the first time I think I appeared before the Board of County Commissioners for one of these was uh, in, in 1993 uh, and I know over the years uh, 
we've had a lot of clerks and assistant clerks uh, look at me sideways for having such long titles <laughs> to our resolutions. Well, I'm sure brevity works out <laughs> in other places, but maybe not in the law, practice of law. So uh, with that, Thank is there any, any miscellaneous business? Mr. Uh, Chair, may yes. I ask Christina to add my name sure. for the babies? Mm -hmm. Any other? Uh, no other miscellaneous business or any public comment anyone signed in for? No, Mr. Chair. Hearing no public comment, uh, I adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much.